Hello, 45 Drive subscribers. So it's been a long time since I've been here, so we've got a lot of new faces, I'm sure. Uh, I'm Mitch, and I'm gonna be doing a tech tip today. So what I'm gonna be talking about is, and actually the tutorial I'm gonna be showing, is migrating VM disks or your VMs altogether off of something like VMware over to something a little more open source and, and open in general. Uh, we love Proxmox, so that's the one I'm going to use, but this should really work with any KVM-based hypervisor. So let's jump into it. Okay, so before I actually get into the tutorial itself, I wanna talk a little bit about VMware or ESXi and Proxmox or KVM and what the difference and subtleties really actually mean. So there's things called hypervisors, which allows you to essentially virtualize uh, hardware on a single machine. So it allows you to create multiple virtual machines on a single server to give you a lot of flexibility and more usability in your hardware rather than having to deploy single bare metal servers for every single uh, application that you have. So VMware uh, uses its own type one hypervisor, which means it's a bare metal hypervisor, and that's called ESXi. Now, as you may know, it's very proprietary in nature. It's locked down. They do have a free version, but it's you're not going to get the whole feature set by going down the free route. So it's very expensive. And now, while it is expensive, there is lots of features that come with VMware. And I'm not here to say that uh, running a free roll your own KVM solution will compete with all of those uh, features, but there is a lot of functionality that comes with even the free open source version of, of KVM, depending on how you're using it. So we got ESXi, like I said, which is their type one hypervisor. And then we've got KVM. What KVM is, is it takes the Linux kernel and it turns it into a type one hypervisor. So it's KVM is literally kernel virtual machine. So what KVM allows you to do is again, take that kernel, use it as a hypervisor, virtualize on it, but then there's other flavors that have built on top of that to allow you to achieve this. So yeah, we have that KVM, which, which is literally taking the Linux kernel and allowing you to virtualize on it. But then there's some tools that make that a lot easier, right? So you're not actually in the command line banging away, creating these VMs. So there's lots of flavors of this. Um, the one that we really love here is called Proxmox. Uh, we use it internally for our, our lab setup. And also we deploy it for certain customers that are looking for a simple, easy to use hypervisor. Um, so with that being said, this tutorial is going to use uh, Proxmox, but like it should work, like I said, on others as well. Uh, another that we've used internally is Overt, um, which is really cool as well. Now, the big thing about Proxmox that's a little different from Overt is Proxmox virtual environment deploys directly on the server that you're running your KVM on, whereas Overt allows you to separate the two. So you can have a, a lightweight uh, machine that's managing just the interface, the user interface itself, and then you leave the, the actual machines to do the KVM. So Proxmox, like I said, is all built into one. You spin up the actual KVM, the Proxmox server, and you've got a self-contained uh, virtualization layer. So both of these offer lots of virtualization. They both offer containers as well, which is another really cool thing. Um, and so I'm not really gonna go more deep into the feature set and all of that, but what I do wanna talk about is for the people out there that may have been on Ver VMware for a really long time and may be interested in, in trying something else, but they wanna take their VMs with them. So this is gonna be a tutorial using, um, if you've got iSCSI mapped into your VMware environment or your ESXi environment, or maybe NFS, which is a lot easier, mind you. Um, we'll take those and we'll show how to map those into a Debian-based Proxmox machine, and then convert those VMDK images, which are the actual disks themselves, into a raw format that Proxmox can use to create VMs and use VMs. So let's jump on over and let's get started. All right, guys, so now we're into our vSphere environment here. As we can see, we've got a three-node vSphere cluster up. These are all ESXi hosts. So there's two main ways that VMware or ESXi consumes network storage. One of those is NFS, which is very simple, and the other one is through iSCSI. NFS is much simpler because there's already a file system there, and all VMware is essentially doing is when you create a new image or a new block device for a machine, it's just creating a new VMDK file on that NFS data store. 
With iSCSI, it's going to be a little more complex to move it over to Proxmox, and the reason why is because VMware has its own file system. It's called VMFS, and when you pass through an iSCSI disk to VMware, it puts its own VMFS on there. So we're going to have to find a way to have Linux read that file system. So let's get into it here, and let's take a look at our data stores. So we can see here we've got a number of different data stores. This is a test environment, so we've got lots of things going on all the time. We can see we have a VMware data store here. And if we look, this is an NFS data store. And then we've got some other, which are actually Petasan. So we'll head it back over here and take a look, uh, just so you get a good understanding on this entire environment. So this is a Petasan cluster that is acting as backing storage for our vSphere cluster. So we've got a number of iSCSI LUNs that are then passed over into the VMware environment and used for uh, images for disks. So that gives you an overview of how all this is laid out. And what we're doing today is we are taking our Proxmox server that we also are hosting, and we're moving some of the VM images from VMware to Proxmox. So let's hop on over to Proxmox. OK, so now we see we have our our Proxmox server up. This is not a cluster environment because this is just for a test. We're going to show how this all works. So if we take a look at our storage here, we have some ZFS storage and we actually have some Ceph storage as well. So we've got another uh, Ceph cluster that is not Petasan, but it is typical Red Hat Ceph that is running for storage for this Petasan node, or sorry, for this Proxmox node. Um, so we're going to show both. We're going to show the way to take some of these disks from VMware and convert them into VMware using both ZFS as well as RBD with Ceph. So let's get started. So first one, we're going to start with NFS because it is very, very simple. Um, all we're going to have to do is take that NFS export and mount it onto our Proxmox machine. So first, let's make a directory where we're going to mount it. And now let's mount it. Now we can see we have an NFS export mounted here. So now if we go into there, we can see we have one VM disk on this. So let's move into there. And now we can see we have two images, two VMDK files in this directory. So if we get a look at how large these are, we can see that the VM vCenter Windows VM flat is the larger file. It's 32 gigs. So this is the one that we are actually going to convert on this Proxmox machine to be able to be used within Proxmox itself. But before we actually go and convert this one, let's also get the iSCSI layer ready as well and get the iSCSI disk mounted into our machine and get that VMDK ready to go. So for this instance, I'm actually going to use a jump server because the network that the iSCSI is running on is a subnet that the Proxmox machine cannot communicate to. So we have to use an intermediary, and then we can move that VMDK over to Proxmox. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to discover that iSCSI disk. So let's run this command. And as we see here, we did a discovery on this IP address where iSCSI is being hosted. And we see we have one actual disk or one IQN here that we're hosting that from. So we're going to map this to this machine. OK, so what we did here essentially is we used the iSCSI tool to take that target name that we found, and we used the IP address for the portal, and we attempted to log in. Now, this iSCSI disk has no CHAP authentication associated with it, so there's no password, there's no authentication. Anyone can log in and mount this disk. And as we see, that's exactly what happened. So we can see now that that disk has been successfully mounted to this machine. So now if we run a ls block command, we can actually see we have SDA and SDA1, which was not there prior. 
So now we have to actually mount the file system that belongs on this disk. So as I touched on earlier, VMware uses VMFS, which is its own file system that is not native to a regular Linux environment. So what you're going to have to do is install a tool to mount this file system in user space. So since we're using VMFS 6, we have to use that specific tool. So I've already got it installed on this, but let's just run it anyway so you can see the command you would use. So apt install VMFS 6 slash dash tools. Now we can see that it's already the newest version and it's already installed. Now, keep this in mind. If you were running this command on your actual Proxmox node, most likely it's not going to find it because the repository is not actually pointing to that. So what I'll do is I'll, in the description down below, I'll uh, link to a mirror where you can actually download this tool directly from the website and then you can pull it down directly onto a Proxmox node if that's something you want to do. So now that we've installed our VMFS 6 tools, we can actually now mount this iSCSI disk with VMFS that belongs that is actually on it. So let's do that right now. First, we're going to make a new directory. We'll just call it tempfs. And now we're actually going to run the VMFS 6 fuse command and dev sda1, which is where the actual partition lives, and now our new directory. And there we go. So we can see quickly that it actually works. So it, it immediately realized that this is VMFS version 6, and it mounted that. So now, if we take a look at our mount points here, we can now see that we have a fuse mount of mount slash tempfs. So let's go into there. And let's clear our screen for a second here. And now we can see we have a, another Windows machine. This one is called WinTest. So let's CD into that directory. And we can again see two VMDK files. One is flat, which is the full size, which is the one we actually want to pull. And that's what we're going to grab. So now if this was a actual uh, scenario, what I would then do is I would do a secure copy of this file over to my Proxmox machine. But in the interest of time, I've actually done that already. So let's just go and take a look. So if we take a look at our root directory, we have that file here, WinTest, flat, VMDK. I even took both of them over. So let's get to the next step. All right, so now we've got everything ready to go. Now we're actually going to take these VMDKs and we're going to transfer them over into a raw format that Proxmox can actually use to mount onto a Windows machine. So let's hop over to our Proxbox machine and take a look at our VMs. So we can see here we've got a number of VMs already created here. So if this was an operating system drive and you wanted to create a whole new VM for this, you could do that. But since the drives that I've actually moved over these uh, VMDKs, they are not the operating system drives. They're just like a D drive or a secondary drive. So you can actually use those and mount them to an already created Windows machine. So that's what we're going to do. So we can see we've got Windows 10-1 here. And if we come over to the hardware, it's already got a few disks, but we're going to add a new disk to this machine, which is the one that we pulled from our VMware environment. Now, before we do that, the last thing I want to show is if we take a look again at our server and our data center and our storage, we've got ZFS and we've got some RVD. So I can convert that VMDK file into a ZVOL if I would like to using our ZFS pool or I can convert it to an RBD using uh, RBD pool here that we've got. And so I'm actually going to do both just to show you how the command is slightly different. But really, all you need is the ID of either storage tier, and you can make it work for yourself. OK, so here we're ready to go. We have our VMDK. We have the VM that we want to pull it from, or pull it to, sorry. Uh, we have, we can see here, it's VM102, and that is also important. We need to know the actual ID of the VM that we want to mount this on. And we also need to know the ID of the storage. So with those things, we can start. So the first thing we're going to do is a QM import disk. Then we select the ID of the VM we want to add it to. Then we give it the name.
and now we give it the storage ID. So the first one we'll do is ZFS. So we're going to create a new ZVOL, ZFS1. And then we do a dash format and we choose raw. Now we can see that it has now imported that disk over to our 102 VM. So let's get a look. Now we can see we have an unused disk that is now showing up within our Windows VM here. And so all we have to do now to add this back in is to simply hit edit and decide what type of bus you want to use. So let's just use SCSI and let's take that image and map it to this Windows machine. And it's as simple as that. All right, so here we go. So now that the disk is now plugged in and mapped to this machine, let's actually take a look at our Windows machine and make sure that everything worked correctly. And if it did work correct correctly, we should see the same files that I was seeing on my VMware side moved over onto this disk on our Proxmox Windows VM. So if we bring on over here, I can see that we've got our disk here. So let's online it. And let's take a look what is in that folder. All right, so we've got our test docs that I created prior, and there we go. <laughs> if you're reading this from within Proxmox VM, you deserve a prize. So I guess that means that it worked out correctly. All right, so that, that about sums up this guide here. We've got our disk mapped into our Windows machine from within our Proxmox server, so everything seems to have worked as it should. So hopefully this helps some of you out there that uh, might be looking to do some migration or even just do some learning on something a little more open, uh, a little less expensive for running a large deployment. Um, and so I hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, so that about wraps up our tutorial here today. Um, so before I finish up, what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to link a knowledge base article that I wrote in the description down below. That'll allow you to really follow along step by step if you want to do this maybe in your home lab or a home setup that you have. So please check that out if it's interesting to you. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you on the next one.